Stock IQ uh, lives in the cloud, but it can be equally deployed uh, on premise, operates in a browser. We're going to integrate into the ERP system to pull in relevant data to do planning. This information consists of things like the item master, the open supply. It'll consist of all open customer orders, sales history. This type of information is what is driving Stock IQ and are for our primary objectives. Our supply chain planning suite is delivering inventory planning, forecasting and demand planning, replenishment planning, and supplier monitoring. If we look at our four keys, here on the home screen, you'll notice that we also have dashboards that provide information. These dashboards are driven by various alerts and the inventory positions that we're seeing inside of the data that we've evaluated. Uh, for example, as you're noticing out in here, out of stock, what am I out of stock on? A click of a button allows us to drill directly into the stock outs. This will identify where we're stocked out. and We also put priorities on them. Furthermore, we've set up views in here or have the ability to set up views that gives us visibility to just the information that I'm looking at. So for instance, as we're moving from that dashboard, if I only want to look at my AB based items, uh, I have the ability to filter those out. This information is what's popping up in my report. I now have the ability to save that report out in here, AB stock outs. So one of uh, Stock IQ's big focuses out in here is to provide that information in the form of the dashboard and provide the ability to drill directly in to begin investigating. So as we start talking about Stock IQ's core functionality, let's start with forecasting. Forecasting is really the heart of the system. It's where we start our business plans. It's where we start our forecast on for our replenishments and also our inventory planning. As you're looking at the application, over here, you will notice I have the ability to select an individual SKU. This is an item that is being planned at a specific DC or stocking location. Furthermore, Stock IQ supports multi channel uh, or omni channel forecasting. What that's basically saying is I can have a forecast for a particular SKU for um, my Amazon FBA business, my e commerce business, Depot. Lowe's, my large customers, that allows us to bring in additional information, sales forecast, budget forecast, other, other relevant information so that we can get into a collaborative planning and forecasting type process. Stock IQ is also a hierarchical planning tool. And when we talk about hierarchical forecasting, we're talking about the ability to organize all of these forecasts into product families, subcategories, regions. We support up to five levels deep within this hierarchy. And essentially what we're doing is we're taking the lower level forecast from all of the individual SKUs for all of our locations and all of our forecast groups or all of our omni channels and rolling them up. This gives us the ability to view trends. These trends can be viewed in units. We also have the ability to view these trends in revenue, cost of goods sold, margin generated. Furthermore, from these levels, in addition to the visibility and the, the overall movement of these products, we have the ability to make adjustments at these levels as well. That's referred to as a top-down uh, process from a forecasting. But let's talk a little bit about our forecasting and some of the core features that are involved in it. Most of our clients are operating as a default in what we call an auto forecasting type methodology. Essentially what's going on when we talk about an auto forecasting is Stock IQ is evaluating the history it's looking for things like trend, seasonality, and general randomness and projecting that forward. We also incorporate in that overall forecast process the ability for the individual, the group, to be able to make changes to those forecasts. So let's talk a little bit about what those are and what each one of those components look like. So for the moment, we're going to start by taking a look at our historical data. Historical data in here is looking at the information that's coming from the ERP system. It might come in the form of a sales, uh, uh, sales order or the invoices. This is some of the things that we discussed during those overall periods. This information is collected. We rank it. We evaluate it. We also evaluate it in context of what the on-hand balances were. The helpfulness in evaluating the on-hand balance is this gives us the ability to detect when there might be stockouts in present. So with this information, Stock IQ is 
conducting an evaluation of that data, we're looking for three primary things. Is the demand going up, going down, staying flat? In this, you can see that we actually have a little bit of forecasted growth. We're then looking for seasonality. Seasonality are those periods in a particular product where demand is up, where demand is down on a consistent basis. Um, of note in here, Stock IQ has the ability to bring seasonality from a hierarchy level. We can also bring in a custom seasonal uh, table as well. So with this information, we're going to evaluate this data utilizing our mathematics and our statistical algorithms. The goal and the objective is to find that forecasting algorithm that best fits the data. That's represented here in the red line. The red line is showing out in here the fit back to the data. It's also projected forward. So as I'm looking at this dotted line, this represents today, everything moving to the right represents our forecast of demand. A couple notes in all of this, you will note that there's various bars that have been entered. These can be forward-looking events. They might be promotions, other things that will affect demand. That will also represent those events that also occurred in the past. So we have the ability to normalize history by removing specific events and promotions. You'll also notice in here one-time fills. So all of this information is utilized to help normalize the data so that we bring it back down to a standard run rate. So as we continue to look at this data, let's continue to move forward. The uh, third thing that we're looking for in all of this data is our confidence within the overall forecast. As we're looking at this overall confidence, this is a measure of my forecast error. This information is used to help us determine precisely how much inventory should be stocked on this item based on our overall goals and objectives. So I'm going to take just a little bit of a detour at this point. It's uh, important to note that I have a service target uh, and an objective of a 99% fill on this particular item. This item is also ranked an A-based item. So in our inventory section, we're gonna talk about stratifying inventory. This is one of the things that Stock IQ does, is it evaluates all of your SKUs in relation to their, their velocities, their contributions from a margin perspective. We're also going to evaluate them on a second dimension. I will tell you, this is actually very, very helpful when we begin thinking about them on that second dimension. So once we've ranked them and identified those SKUs that make up our top priorities, we're then going to evaluate them in terms of what type of a product are they. So Stock IQ focuses on usage. Is it recurring? Is it sporadic? Is it slow? The reason that we focus in on this is it's very difficult to forecast sporadic and slow-based items. So we deploy different methodologies for managing and maintaining our service level goals on those. Back over to the stratification, though, let's talk about what that means and when we're evaluating these items. It's essentially the 80-20 rule, the 90-10 rule, which is to say, as I begin looking at all of my individual items, what are those that are performing the best based on the criteria that I'm looking at? So we're utilizing that sales history. We can also use forward looking to begin ranking these individual items. These rankings then can be directly associated with our service objectives associated with them. So back over in here, as we were talking about forecast error and we were talking about safety stock, we're going to evaluate the requirements uh, from an inventory perspective or the baseline inventory and the reorder points based on our confidence in the forecast or stated another way, the error rate that we're seeing on that. The error rate, by the way, is a, is a measure of my confidence in that actual demand coming a few uh, true based on what we've historically seen. If I begin thinking about that in terms of confidence, I'm 95% confident that the demand at the lead time will come in 16% above that line or 16% below. We take this information and we convert that into a safety stock value. This is the minimum amount of inventory that needs to be carried at this point in time at the lead time of the product to maintain that service objective, the planning lead time. The planning lead time is how long it takes me to replenish. And we're also looking at the average order sizes. So if an average order size out there was sitting at 15 units, we can put rules in place to say we never carry less than 13 units. So with this information, and as we're looking at Stock IQ, we've developed a forecast of demand moving forward in the future. We've also evaluated how much inventory needs to be maintained to support our service level objective. 
The other things that we're going to do is we're going to be establishing precisely how much inventory needs to be maintained and should be maintained. So these are our targets. We should be maintaining inventory between 13 units and 65 units. This also helps us from an inventory reporting perspective. If I am below those levels or I'm above those levels, we'll generate alerts. Um, we'll also calculate the reorder point. This is when should I generate a replenishment for that item. So with all of this information, it becomes very helpful when we begin looking at our alert-based planning. Alert-based planning is essentially Stock IQ is providing to the individual those items that need to be reviewed. For instance, if I am in a projected stock out situation, I have the ability to very quickly identify what are those top priority SKUs. I can directly click on them, or if I have a view already established, I have the ability to filter down on that. But let's actually click in and show you what those look like. So with these views, all of a sudden now, I have a, pri a list of priorities, 54 items in there, organized by my, my site locations, and these are of particular concern. Where this comes into play is when I am managing a large number of SKUs. So we greatly enhance productivity for our clients. Generally, we're seeing 50 to 70% improvement in productivity because we're highlighting that information that actually needs to be reviewed and maintained. So back to the forecasting. We've talked about all of this. We then generate a replenishment suggestion for each and every one of these individual items. Basically, what we're doing is, is we're looking at the overall total demand that's being placed on these items. It comes in the form of back orders or open customer orders, our forecasted demand. We also evaluate that in the context of what we already have on order or inbound. With that information, we're going to project our inventory balance by day essentially starting with what's on hand, subtracting off those demands, adding back in supplies, that gets us then to the point where we can identify when we need to be launching purchase orders. This is a real key element in here in that our planning horizon can be established for 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. So it supports the sales inventory and operations planning process. It also helps that planner identify exactly how much inventory needs to be replenished. One additional item that I'd like to highlight here in the forecasting is our collaborative approach to forecasting. You'll notice we've incorporated what we call an operational forecast. This gives us the ability to come forward and make adjustments. Adjustments may be in the form of a pinpoint adjustment to a forecast. So I can come in and say, you know what, this forecast needs to be 75 units and it'll make that adjustment. If I save this, we're recording snapshots of it so we can measure our forecast error. And we now have a new replenishment plan moving forward. That's one way of actually doing it. Uh, as I'd noticed from an ease or noted at the very beginning of the, of the session here, ease of use is one of our hallmarks. Ease of use really comes into the visual component for us. When we can see information, it often leads us to a lot of insight as to what's going on with this particular item. So let's take that to the next step. If I need to make an adjustment at this level, I can take this forecast and I can make decisions on what I want to do with it. So maybe we think this forecast is just a little bit aggressive. Let's put a drop of 15% down on it and apply that. This is now my new forecast. By the way, when we're talking about this, we have the ability to do it at the individual unit level. We also have the ability to do this at the hierarchy. So those changes that I just talked about can be conducted in what we call a top-downs approach. So when organizing our information by category, by subcategory, I can take entire categories of product and make large changes to them. So I can utilize the forecast wizard or the edit forecast. I can make decisions on putting a certain lift or decline in aggregate. If I wanna make this change and I apply that, it will get applied to every SKU that resides within that overall channel. In addition to these types of changes, we can also enter in promotions or initial store fills, so forward-looking events that will impact that demand. So that's really the starting point for us for saying, what is our demand plan? What are we going to be replenishing to? The next step in the process is the Stock IQ will be generating replenishment suggestions. Replenishment suggestions are those supplies that we need to order or manufacture or transfer in from other facilities to meet our overall needs. We have a wizard that's been set up that allows us to 
quickly get at the information. I have some wizards out here that basically say, if I want to generate transfers, let's highlight transfers. If, however, I want to place POs for a certain DC, I have filters set up, and these are all of the vendors that I would need to generate replenishments to that vendor. So the views are very helpful in that we can tailor this information to the individual. It might be in the form of what suppliers am I working with, which sites or locations do I replenish. Uh, maybe it's a class of inventory that I want to look at. So with this information, we're highlighting what needs to be ordered. This information then is presented in a grid for the individual planner to evaluate. This information can be sorted on, it can be um, moved around so you can customize the look and the feel of your view. In fact, I actually have a view out here that I like looking at for um, my order wizard POs. So I have specific information that I like looking at in this form. This information then can be utilized to evaluate what I want to do with this product. One thing to note in here is each one of these individual items, we have access to those order schedules. We have access to the forecast. We have access to the details that reside below it. And all of this information at the click of a button, we have visibility to where other inventory is as well. So as I mentioned, Stock IQ makes recommendations on transfers. Transfers come in the form of if I'm in a hub and a spoke type of environment, moving inventory from my hub to my outside facilities. Uh, it might be in the form of I need to do a rebalancing of my inventory. So all of these are capable within the place orders. The way that these functions work as well is we're also taking this information and helping our planners make decisions around logistics and planning. One of the big deals today is making sure that when we order product that we're ordering in full container loads, we can bring in weights, we can bring in cubes, we can bring in pallets. This information then can be used with our order wizard to optimize and fill up a container without the individual having to go through and play with quantities or make adjustments to that. So with this information, then what we're doing is, is we're taking this and in the series of next steps, validating that order and publishing it back directly into the ERP system. So this is our order planner. Again, purchase orders, transfers. We can launch work orders as well. Another big function of Stock IQ is to monitor our vendor's performance. Vendor's performance comes in the term of are they delivering on time? Are they delivering in full? Uh, this information, basically, we're utilizing a lot of the receipt information. With that, then we can characterize how an individual, uh, how an individual vendor is actually performing. It's good, hard facts. I have found that in my 30 years of working with this, when presented with information and facts, it really makes it easy to address individual situations. Another component that we're doing, as well as monitoring the vendor as a whole, is we're also generating lead times lead times, which is what is our actual performance from a vendor. And again, I'm going to leverage these views that I've established. What I'm looking at right now is a particular vendor out in here for a particular SKU and evaluating their receipts. We have been provided with a 15 day planning lead time, but we're actually measuring 31. So this gives us the ability in the, in the replenishment to decide, do we want to utilize the, stock, the lead time calculated by Stock IQ or that provided by the vendor? So very, very helpful in keeping us up to date, particularly in today's environment. And lastly, as we begin looking at the inventory, uh, we have a lot of different reports that talk about where our slow movers are, our stock out stratification. We also measure performance as well. So performance comes in the form of those KPIs, which is how are we actually performing as an organization? And in here, we have the ability to go through and evaluate um, for this particular SKU. How are we performing? What's our fill rate? What's our service level? How many order lines? We can also measure this service level based on ABC category. Hierarchy is presented in our forecasting and at the individual site and location level. So the information in here is also going to give you the metrics to analyze how we're actually performing. And then one last note in here, when we talk about sales and operations planning processes, I had noted in our forecast manager in here, the ability to roll up demand into an aggregated level. In a SIOP process, typically we focus on no more than, than 10 to 12 categories of product. What this allows us to do is generate a forecast at that aggregate level. It allows us to project inventory balances at that aggregate level for our SNOP type processes.
Uh, and again, I've established some views out in here, which allow me to very quickly look at projected inventory. Projected inventory comes in the form of filtering down on categories, products, uh, different things. Uh, in our overall reporting as well, you will note that we have pivot tables. These pivot tables can be modified and adjusted. We can report in on dollars if we want. So what is our projected on-hand dollars versus quantity? And all of this information is easily exported out to Excel. So when it comes to an SNOP process, demand, supply, inventory are all available within Stock IQ. Again, this is a very high level demonstration, which is our focus today. Highlight some of the capabilities of Stock IQ. We're well suited for distribution, manufacturing, folks working in omni channel environments.